My name is Rong Dao Lai. I teach at the University of Southern California. Today, I would like to talk about what does it mean to be modern in Chinese Buddhism. There are as many ways to be modern as there are to be Buddhist, as David McMahon has so brilliantly documented in his book, The Making of Buddhist Modernism. But for this lecture, I'm going to focus on a specific group of Buddhists at a specific time in modern Chinese history. These are the Buddhist monks at new style Buddhist academies in the first few decades of the 20th century. Why focus on this group? The Educational Modernization Project in Chinese Buddhism produced leaders and teachers who shapes the way Buddhism is taught, practiced, represented, and imagined both in China and in the larger Chinese Buddhist world. The first modern Buddhist institution of learning, the first Fu Xue Yuan, was founded by the reformist monk Tai Xu in Wuchang in 1922. Very soon in the following decades, other similar institutions were founded across the country. What distinguished the Fu Xue Yuan from an earlier system of clerical training is that a Fu Xue Yuan or Buddhist academy offered comprehensive curriculum covering both Buddhist and secular subjects. Some even offered instructions in foreign languages. They utilized textbooks and blackboards, something that would seem so conventional in our modern day classroom, but they were considered groundbreaking and innovative. Students also took examinations and they were awarded diplomas at graduation. In other words, the modern academies offered a new way to imagine learning in Chinese Buddhism and also defining orthodoxy in Chinese Buddhism. Naturally, this system produced a very different type of students, which I will now turn to. Student monks, or xuesheng, are those who identified with the imagined textual community formed around Buddhist academies. This collective identity was disseminated through the numerous Buddhist periodicals. Over time, student monk became the ideal for a modern monastic career. According to this ideal, student monks were educated in both religious and secular knowledge, had a rational and scientific approach to religion, were sensitive to contemporary issues in Chinese society, and shared a vision for modern China in which Buddhism would play an active role in society. Student monks were also often nationalistic and revivalist. In their vision, Buddhism as a rational, moral, and global religion would be essential to the project of strengthening the Chinese nation. Symbols of the nation state were often incorporated into the identity. Here in this photo, you will see the flag in the background of a photo taken in front of the Wuchang Academy in the 1930s. This is in fact very common in the photography and representation of Buddhism in the 1920s and 30s. To conclude, I argue that the nation was central to imagining the modern in modern Chinese Buddhism. This historical background is very important to bear in mind in our attempt to understanding Buddhism in China today.